Okay, in this video we are going to talk about the Williamson ether synthesis. Uh, this is a, a pretty simple example here, um, a pretty simple reaction. So in this reaction, um, basically what we're going to do is start with an alcohol. So we are describing this alcohol or, or summarizing an alcohol by ROH. This alcohol is then treated with some base, and there's really two bases that we'll normally use to do this, and then some alkyl halide here represented by R prime to X. So this is going to be some um, alkyl halide. And the result of this, treating this alcohol with a base followed by an alkyl halide, is obviously, due to the name of this reaction, we are now going to synthesize out an ether. And this is really the best and easiest way to synthesize an ether. Alcohol using base followed by an alkyl halide to do an ether. We'll notice here that the second part of this reaction is really an SN2 reaction, so primary and secondary alkyl halides are what are going to work best to run this reaction. All right, so we have um, two examples here that we're going to look at, so let's take a look first. Here we have a secondary alcohol with a stereocenter. Um, in this case, the base we're going to use is sodium hydride, NaH. And that sodium hydride, remember, gives you really an Na plus with an H minus. And one thing we really want to remember about this H minus, H minuses are not reducing agents, they are bases. NaH is the base we always use when we're talking about aliphatic alcohols or alkyl alcohols. <clears throat> and then followed by some alkyl halide. So clearly what we're doing overall is we're simply replacing this H with this three carbon group, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, another thing to note here is that the stereochemistry from the carbon to the oxygen is retained. Okay, so if in this case this is a wedge, we also keep that wedge here. The stereochemistry is retained. We go from the functional group of an alcohol to an ether. So let's just go through this mechanism. It's it's fairly simple. Um, so Na plus or NaH gives you Na plus and an H minus. The H minus is what we're really concerned about. And again, this is a very good base. So that base is going to deprotonate that um, hydrogen on your alcohol. Okay. And what that does is really produce an alkoxide. Again, the stereochemistry is maintained. So this O has um, an extra lone pairs and a negative charge. Um, and now essentially what we've created is a really good nucleophile. So the alcohol by itself is not a great nucleophile. We deprotonate it to form the alkoxide. This is a very good nucleophile. So in step two, we can simply do an SN2 reaction, and that's exactly what happens. So the next step in this reaction is to do our SN2 reaction, backside attack, and that will give us our final product. So all the normal rules of SN2 apply. If this is a stereocenter, you get inversion of stereochemistry. Inversion of stereochemistry, if that's relevant, at that carbon here, at that carbon there. But all the other stereochemistry, this, this um, wedge here is maintained and still a wedge. Uh, again, two steps. Sodium hydride will deprotonate to form the alkoxide. We've now made a very good nucleophile. Step two, we add in our electrophile and alkyl halide. We do our simple SN2 reaction to get our final product and the new bond that we form. <clears throat> So this reaction works well with alcohols, but it also works very well with phenols. So what we have here is obviously a phenol, and the Williamson ether synthesis is very effective for phenols as well. There's one small difference. If we remember, a phenol is much more acidic than an alcohol is. 
Um, so we don't need to use as strong a base. Sodium hydride is a very strong base to deprotonate alcohols that usually have pKa's of about that's 16 or so. Phenols have pKa's of about 10. <clears throat> I don't need to use such a strong base like sodium hydride. Sodium hydroxide is usually the base that I use. So sodium hydride for regular alcohols, sodium hydroxide works perfectly well for phenols. Um, and again, the same exact reaction here, sodium hydroxide will deprotonate this H to form a minus. That minus will do an SN2 attack to kick out this bromine to get the product here. So we form a new bond from the oxygen to the carbon that was connected to the halogen, and here's the product that we'd see. Um, just so we're completely comfortable with this, let's uh, go ahead and just draw the mechanism one more time. So here I'm just going to kind of draw the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. Draw a couple lone pairs and a minus. <clears throat> First step we have here, we simply deprotonate. Sorry, let's put that bonds to make sure we clearly show that they go on the O. Okay, we deprotonate to form <clears throat> our phenoxide. So that now has an extra lone pair and a negative. We've made a fantastic nucleophile here. And that nucleophile now will do an SN2 attack, backside attack, kick out our alkyl halide to give us our final product again in ether. Okay, so that is the Williamson ether synthesis. Very simple um, reaction um, to really master. Okay, so the homework you have is quite simple. All I want you to do is provide the correct reagents to synthesize the product that's shown here. So here we have a cyclohexanol, and I want you to synthesize this product. So supply the correct reagents to complete this transformation, and then also show the complete mechanism. Okay, so for this example, just again supply the reagents to complete the transformation and then also the mechanism so make sure you show all of the steps and that assignment you can turn in and bring into class on Monday